Hey everybody, welcome to the Bones Collector. Today I'm going to do a video about my top 10 games of 2019. And I realize it's February 3rd, but I had some things crop up in my life. I couldn't get this video out any sooner. Um, I, so I'm hopefully going to uh, get through this as quick as I possibly can and get you playing these games so that you can see what we really enjoyed for 2019. So uh, I have made this list and we'll see what you think of it. It's games that play in a, a medium complexity world where uh, games that most people can play and those are the games that we really really enjoy so here they come without any further talking here's my top 10 games of 2019 and I'll also try and tell you where my wife Lori thought these games should fall uh, I may forget but I try I'll try not to so first game in number spot number 10 is Old West Empresario by Tasty Minstrel Games the game is designed by uh, Stanislav Kordonsky, Kordonsky. but uh, Tasty Mental Games does a lot of games that I really, really love. They, they're probably one of my favorite board game production companies. They do a wonderful job with games that, <laughs> that I like to play, like I say, a medium complexity, family weight type of game, I, I, that I call family weight, and Old West Empresario fits that bill. I was in love with it the first time I played it. There's dice drafting in it. You're going to roll some dice, have columns of tiles that you choose according to the dice that are that are laid out. You're going to draft those dice, take a tile from that column, and start building your Old West city. And you're going to become the mayor of the best city in the Old West. So that's the goal of the game. The person that scores the most points by the way you lay those tiles and build your town, that's the goal of the game. So a very, very fun game. It takes about 45 minutes to play, and I think it plays two to four, because I don't think you can play this solo. Yes, two to four players. A lot of fun. Old West Empresario. All right, let's put that over here. And in number nine position is a two-player only game called Foothills. It's a card version of a big board game called Snowdonia. It's about trains. And in Foothills, like Snowdonia, you're going to clear away rubble, build rails, and score a bunch of points. You have to fulfill some cards, get them into your scoring stack in order to get points for them at the end of the game because it's a timing thing. you got to make sure you get those cards that you're using in your tableau into that scoring stack by the end of the game because if you don't, you don't get any points for them and that would really suck and it happens. So you really, really got to pay attention how you play this game when you put those cards in your scoring stack because you want to milk it and get the benefit of those cards as much as possible but still get them over into that scoring stack so you get the points at the end of the game. I have never played Snowdonia, so I cannot compare it to that big board uh, game. I really, really love this game. I've enjoyed it, and it is designed by Ben Bateson and Tony, Tony Boydell. And I love uh, Foothills, obviously, because it comes in at number nine, and it's a two-player only game, and it takes under 30 minutes. So that is a wonderful thing for us. I really, really like it, Foothills. Uh, let's see if it's okay. Next game in number eight position is Point Salad, and this is Lori's number nine. I think Foothills and Old West Empresario, she left off her top ten of the year, but she was wrong. I was <laughs> I was right. They are top ten. Uh, Point Salad is another game that I, I did an unboxing of this on an airplane. I, there's a video and uh, on our uh, YouTube channel of me unboxing this game. On an airplane, we were flying either home here to Orlando or we were flying to Ohio. I can't remember which. But yeah, I did an unboxing on an airplane. If you want to watch that, it's pretty cool. But Point Salad is nothing but cards. And the cards are various vegetables. What do we got? Carrots, peppers, tomatoes, cabbage. And on the other side of the cards are goals that you use to score points. So when those cards are laid out on the table, you have to choose whether you want to take some vegetables or you want to take some of those goal cards, those end game goal cards. And then you try to meet the expectations of that goal card by the vegetables that you select. So there's a fine balance there because if you let too many uh, turns go by without taking some of these cards that score you points at the end of the game, you would end up with you know with a bunch of vegetables you can't use to score points. So and they, they say various things. Let me read some of them to you. This is this would be most tomatoes, you get 10 points. Cabbages, for every cabbage equals five points. 
tomatoes. Oh, if you have an even total of tomatoes, you get seven points. If you have an odd total of tomatoes, you get three points. So there's all kinds of crazy stuff like that that you, uh, you get minus two points there for every cabbage that you have. What's this one? Most carrots is 10 points. Most cabbage, 10 points. And there's some, com some that are a little more complex, like this one. You get four points for every carrot, minus two for every cabbage, minus two for every tomato. So it gets pretty tricky, some of these cards. And you have to think about them when you take them. And you have to think about when you, did I say when? You have to think about when you take them and why you take them. And then try to select those vegetables out of the market to make sure that you're satisfying those cards. But it's a lot of fun. It's quick and easy, and it's a great filler game, and a wonderful game design, and I love it. It's We can play this game in 15 minutes. Hey, you can pull this game out and play it and have a lot of fun. That's Point Sal. It comes in number eight for 2019, and I really, really love it. All right, let's see. Number seven is a game called Draftosaurus. Did I, I don't know if I mentioned Lori had Point Salad at number nine. She has Draftosaurus, her number two game of 2019. That's how much she loved this game. And I really love it too, so I can see why she did. It's designed by Antoine Bauza, Corentin Labrat, Ludovic Maublanc. <laughs> I don't know who, what the last name is. Teo Rivera. So I, I don't know. A uh, bunch of names that I slaughtered. I do recognize Antoine Bauza. I believe he did Seven Wonders and some other games that are very, very good. So he's an excellent board game designer. This game plays in 15 minutes for two to five players, and it says eight and up on the box, and I think you could teach a bright eight-year-old this game. It's very easy to play. You simply are going to have a handful of wooden dinosaurs. You're gonna draft them, which is a mechanic, gaming mechanic where you take one and pass the rest, and you just keep doing that, and the ones that you select, you're gonna play on a player board that has two sides, winner, and summer, I guess. I think it's yeah, winter and summer. And you have a way that you're going to place those dinosaurs specifically on that board to maximize your points. You also have a die that you're going to roll, and whatever is on the face of that die, that's where you have to put that dinosaur. And that hurts because you're going to have that handful of dinosaurs, and you're going to select one, and you're going to think, well, I want it to go in this pen here, but when somebody rolls that dice, if that pen doesn't come up on the die, you have to select another area of the board to put that in, and that's really hard, and it hurts to do that. But in Draftosaurus, you put those on the one side of the board, and then you add up your point total after you're done with that. You flip it over, play the winter side after you've played the summer side, place all your dinosaurs, get your score, you add the two scores together, and the person with the most points wins the game. It is fast and fun. It is a pretty meaty puzzle to solve to try to see if you can beat all the other players maximizing your points placing those dinosaurs on your player board on that little park and it's very very cute very fun we both love it again Lori's number two and my number seven for the year Draftosaurus okay all right number six game of the year Lori's number five is Copenhagen and she and I backed this game on Kickstarter. Copenhagen is a wonderful Tetra-style puzzle game. Uh, you're using cards. All the cards are color-coded, and you have tiles in a market. If you want to take a size 2 tile, you're going to play two cards. If the tile is red, they have to be red cards. So if you have a red number 2 tile in the market and you want that for your player board, you're going to have to play two red cards, take that number 2 uh, size tile and three size tile would have to do the same thing. Three cards, whatever color the tile is. If the tile is green, you gotta have three green cards for a three, a green three tile. If you want a size four tile, you have to have four cards, that color of that tile in order to select it. You place it on your board, you're gonna have icons you're gonna cover up. It's a very, very pretty game. Uh, on your player board, you're building the, the facades that are in Copenhagen on the buildings, on the uh, in the port by the water and it's, it has a reputation for that beautiful those beautiful facades on those homes and so you're kind of imitating that and here is a picture of the port with the cards laying around it where you're going to select cards from get them in your hand and then play them from your hand to buy them from the market it's a lot of fun again very fast I think we can play this game in a half an hour and we like that time frame uh, there's enough to think about to make it fun for you so you're not bored and that is Copenhagen and that is my number six game of the year Lori's number five all right where are we at number f my number five Lori's number four 
is a game called Bamuntu. And in Bamuntu, you have a big board in the middle of the table, and it's going to have a bunch of tiles on it. The tiles all have animals on them, and they're thick tiles, kind of like an Azul type of tile. Let's see if I can get them out here real quick to show you. This is the board that they're going to be on. Yeah, look at this big bag of tiles. And each one of these tiles, I think there's 12 different animals. You only choose eight of them for the game that you're going to play. The other four won't be used in that game. And so every time you play, it can be different depending on the animals that you choose because each animal on that tile is a specific movement that you have to perform when you leave that tile. You're going to take your man, place him on a tile. Let's say you place him on a giraffe. When you go to move from that giraffe, you have to do the specific movement of the giraffe. And each animal, as, as I said, has a specific movement. And all the movements are on your player screen that you're going to have, which is a very fun aid when you're playing this game. Because you, you can't memorize all of these. But some of the movements are this. See, the giraffe was move one, two, or three spaces. The tarantula, move one or two spaces. Then you may move any unoccupied animal tile to any empty space. The zebra says, move horizontally or vertically any number of spaces. The chimpanzee says, move diagonally any, any number of spaces. The elephant says, move exactly two spaces in one direction. Other players cannot move you while you are on the elephant. So there's various movements that the, and you, then you, once you leave that tile, you take it. And it's a set collection. You want to collect as many of those alike animals as you can. And also on the tiles are some icons that are scored at the end of the game. And that makes it even deeper and even more fun. And I really, really love this one. The Moon 2, I'm telling you, folks, it is a fun game. And just the right, I think it takes about, what's the box say? Half an hour, 30 minutes, 10 and up, 2 to 5 players. So I really, really love these types of games that don't take a long time, but still have enough to think about to keep your mind busy and your heart beating and your smile glowing because you're having a great time and you're playing a game like the moon too and that folks is my number five Lori's number four i love it gosh it's a great game all right my number four and Lori's number three is a game called horrified oh gosh when I first heard about this game, I didn't have my reservations about it because it's mass market, something that doesn't usually turn out well. Mass market games generally are very weak. They don't have a lot to offer as far as uh, mechanics and gameplay. But this game is about the monsters from my childhood, Dracula, Mummy, and I just, I couldn't resist. The Wolfman's in here, the Bride of Frankenstein, and, and the monster himself. Uh, gosh, I just had to get my hands on it. And when we played it, it's a cooperative adventure. So all players are against the game. And it has a scaling difficulty level. You can adjust how hard the game is by the number of monsters that you put in the game. And we just loved it from the first time we played it. Uh, so this has seven little monster minis that you move around the board. And uh, that is so much fun. It's, it caught me off guard because I didn't expect much. I really, really enjoy playing it, and I, you know what, maybe I'll play it today. It's from one to five players, so you can play it solo, which is pretty cool. And again, it's the monsters from my childhood, and I just really, really, that nostalgia feeling I get when I play this game is, is kind of like magic. It takes me back, and I really enjoy Horrified. I hope you check this game out. I did a video overview of this game, and I did some, for some of the other games that you're seeing here. But uh, yeah, Horrified, a uh, wonderful game. For one to five. My number four game of the year. Right? Yes. All right. My number three game of the year is a game called Tiny Towns by Peter McPherson. And publisher is AEG. Tiny Towns is from one to six players. Takes 45 minutes. It says 14 and up, but I think a 10-year-old could play this game very easily. It's an easy game, and that's why I love it. You, each player has a small board, and in the center of the table are going to be seven cards, I believe, and each card has a 
design on how you have to place resources on that board in front of you in order to buy a building that you're going to take and place on the board in a certain specific manner to score the most points. It is a puzzly, difficult thing to do because you only have so many squares and if you eliminate those some of those squares, when you try to do the design that's on those cards in the center of the table, you've already eliminated some of those squares and it's not possible. So you eliminate some of your ability to grab uh, buildings and lay out those designs to get buildings to put on your player map. So man map is really, really a thinky puzzle. And the thing that I love about Tiny Towns is I can explain it in five minutes to someone that walks in my house. They don't have to be a gamer and they will kick my butt probably because they're smarter than me. And I love that. I love games that have that ability. They're so few and far between. The rules are easy, but the puzzle is very difficult. Doesn't matter who you are. And that's what makes Tiny Towns my number three game of the year. It's a beautiful thing, man. I'm telling you. All right, my number two game of the year. We're getting down the nitty gritty. My number two game of the year is a two player only game again, but this is a wonderful little card game. Uh, again, two players only. It's designed by Trevor Benjamin and Brett Gilbert. It has a uh, something unique in it. It has a cloth board. It's folded up in here, and I really think that's amazing. I'll pull that out. Look at that. It's like a, like a dish towel. That's the board you're going to be playing on. And I wish, I hope more card games that, and I have many card games that we play, and it's always beneficial to have a, a mat. And usually those are add-ons when you have those games. You have to buy them extra. And they won't fit in the box, which is annoying as a dickens. But when you have something like this, it folds up like that, nice and neat. That is pretty cool. It fits right in the box. And in this game, you're simply going to have a hand of cards. You're going to make a choice whether you want to play your card in the mandala or whether you want to take cards from the mandala and play them on your scoring row or put them in your scoring stack. And that sounds easy, doesn't it? The rules aren't difficult, but again, the puzzle is very meaty. And if you've ever played Hanamakoji, which is a game I always rave about and sets a standard for me on a game that can be so small and so perfect. Uh, it's very similar that you get that similar feel to Hanamakoji when you're playing Mandala. The cards will come out different. You have to think on your feet constantly because you just don't know how those cards are going to come out and that's the beauty of Mandala. And I'm telling you this game caught me again, caught me by surprise, a very inexpensive box of fun for everyone. Play it in 20 minutes and you'll want to play it again. As soon as you're done, all right, let's play it again. You play it again, you're, you're like, okay, let's play it again. <laughs> I mean, it's that addicting to play a game like this. You know, let's play it again. And you know you got your hands on a good game when that's what you want to do. You want to keep playing it and keep playing it and keep playing it. That's why it stayed, probably will stay in my library for a long, long time. It's my number two game, the 2019, a two-player only game, Mandala. Okay, now I know what you've been waiting for. The number one game, my favorite game of 2019. Let me see here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> here it is. And the number one game of 2019 is Isle of Cats. Man, I tell you, this game is another one. We backed it on Kickstarter and it came to us and we played it once, played it again. Play it again. We fell in love with it. It's Isle of Cats by a guy named Frank West. And Frank has really outdone himself this time. I played a game called City of Kings from Frank West and Fedoran Gardens. And I think both those games were good, but they had specific audiences, I think. City of Kings was a huge fantasy adventure game, which you really had to get involved in in order to enjoy and took an enormous amount of time to play. Vidoran Gardens was a small box game, which was very good also. It had a card mechanic in it where you're overlaying the cards to make paths and score points. And again, a, 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 I think a smaller market. This game is amazing because, again, everybody can play this game. It even has a variant for family mode, it's called, where you take part of the game away and just do the tile laying. In this game, the evil Vesh is going to... A, invade an island and we have to rescue all the kitty cats off that island and put them on our boat in order to save them 
And if the kitty cats are on tiles, you take the tiles, and again, it's a tile laying game, which it, I mean, I'm partial to them, and you take those tiles and lay them on your boat, and the way you put them on the boat determines how you score points. You have to cover up, for every room you don't cover up, there's various rooms on your ship. For every room you don't cover up, you're minus five points. There's rats on the ship. Every good rat ship has rats, so you have to cover up those rats, or every rat you don't cover up is minus one point. So there's a lot going on. And if that isn't enough, if that isn't enough, you've got a hand of cards that you're going to do a draft before every turn. You have seven cards, and you're going to draft back and forth between players until those cards have been passed out. And once the card draft is over with, then you begin your turn and start selecting tiles from around the island. Gosh, I just hope this game, I don't know what it takes to be eligible for the Spiel des Jahres, but man, I'm telling you, this game is a, it's beautiful to look at. The box is amazing. This is the thickest game box I've ever seen. So I have an overview on my channel. If you want to check it out, just scan down through my YouTube channel and you'll find an overview of this game where I talk about it. And I just can't stop talking about it. Yeah, Isle of Cats, uh, in the box lid here, it says cat setup. If you have a pet cat, you should place it here while playing the Isle of Cats. Because every gamer that has a cat knows when you take the lid off your board game, your cat's going to sleep in. That's just the way it goes. That's what cats do. They get in, even if they can't fit, they'll hang out over the edges. But Frank is smart, and he made this box so thick that your cat won't hurt it and the art on this box is beautiful. I could just talk all day about this game. I hope you get the opportunity to get this game, pick it up and play it, because you will love it. The wooden kitty cats that are in it, the component quality. Gosh, what else can I say about this game? He just did a magnificent job. A huge draw bag comes with it. I mean, you can stick both hands in the draw bag. That's how big the draw bag is when you're pulling tiles out to put them in the market. I mean to tell you, I just want to praise Frank West for his effort on this game. I think it's a magnificent game. I, I want to play it right now. It's so attractive. The ships are attractive. Again, if you want to see some of the component quality and stuff, just check out my video. You can see the beautiful ship boards that, that you play with and that you're laying your tiles on. Uh, what else do I want to say about this game? Hmm. Gosh, one to four players, so you can play it solo. It says 60 to 90 minutes. Oh, gosh, I think Lori and I play this in 45 minutes. I mean, it says ages eight and up, and I think an eight-year-old could play this game, especially in family mode if you do that. This game, again, has a solo mode, family mode, and complex mode. So it's got three ways you can play this game, which makes it so versatile. And it has a large audience that it is that can play this game, and that's what makes it beautiful. Experienced gamers love this kind of game. Newbies, rookies that don't play a lot of board games can pick this up, figure it out, and play it, and have a great time. And I just I love that kind of game. And most of these games on this list I just talked about are that way. But boy, this is the number one game far and away, uh, Isle of Cats. I just, I uh, just want, I can't say enough about it. For for Frank West and and what he's done in this box is just a box full of fun, a box full of fun you can have uh, enjoy for years. And man, I think that's pretty hard to do. And I really, really enjoy this one. My wife Lori loves it, and I believe yes, it was Lori's number one. Uh, that's Isle of Cats. It's both of ours number one game for 2019. Golly sakes. I just love this game. I love Catch. you got to check it out, folks. just have to. And let me talk about a few games. I pl Again, I played a lot of games. Those games all made my 200 game library. Now, from 2019, uh, some honorable mentions, uh, Wingspan from Stonemire Games. Lori had that as her number eight game, and it is a wonderful game. She's, she's right. Beastie Borders, she had at number 10. We kickstarted that game. It's a tiny box game with a modular board set collection with these little glass animals that come with it. And we have a lot of fun with that little game. Bloomtown was Lori's number six, and I loved Bloomtown also. It's very similar to Old West Impresario. 
It's a tile laying game where you have a board and you're laying tiles down in a certain fashion to score points. Uh, you have a, a market area, so you're looking at the market and above each one of those tiles there's an icon on it and whichever tile you choose when you lay it on your board and cover up another icon it's going to determine which tile you're going to take on your next turn. So you have to think ahead and, and I love games that make you do that. You have to be efficient in the things that you're doing and how you're choosing those tiles. So that's Bloomtown. Uh, it is very, very good and very fun. Bloomtown, that was Lori's number six. Also from 2019 is a game called Tapestry from Stonemeyer Games. I believe Jamie Stegmeyer uh, designed this game. We played it one time at a convention and I liked it. A game like Tapestry is uh, a little deep, so you have to play it more than once to get a real feel for how the game works. We played it and we liked it, but it had a $100 price tag, so we didn't mess with it. And then we managed to pick one up used, and I get that in a couple of weeks, and I'll play it some more, and maybe it'll move up my ratings after I play it some, but it is a magnificent looking game. The production is crazy, so we really, really enjoyed its tapestry. Stefan Feld came out with a two-player only game called Revelation of 1828. I believe it's his only two-player game that I'm aware of. Two-player only. It's a, a political theme. It is about the presidential race of 1828, and you're trying to win as many delegates as possible. Uh, my wife says it's cutthroat. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'll have to play it again to see if it's that cutthroat. It's Stefan Feld, and it works magnificently. Two-player only. Revolution 1828. Another game from 2019 was a game by Katerina Lacerda and Vita Lacerda. Now, Vita Lacerda, for those of you that don't game, he's one of the best board game designers in the world. And his daughter, Katerina, had designed a game, and it was called Dragon Keepers. Now, Vita Lacerda, I've played many of his games, and I'm in love with his games. Let's see, Lisboa, Kanban, Galaris, Venus. I have not played On Mars. Escape Plan, I've played uh, wasn't one of my favorites. But his games, for the most part, magnificent. And Dragon Keepers, he, he helped his daughter uh, develop this game, and it's wonderful. And even though I had Escape Plan and Dragon Keepers, I played both and I kept Dragon Keepers and sold Escape Plan. So that should tell you something. I love this little Dragon Keepers game. It's in the world of How to Train Your Dragon, that animated series. I think they did three movies, and I love those movies. And she kind of got into that universe in order to design this game. So it's a lot of fun called Dragon Keepers. Worth your time. Please please give it a, give it a look. Uh, dexterity game called Men at Work. We love that, about uh, putting little workers on a building site. Uh, and you draw cards that tell you what color of girder you have to stick your worker on and whether he's carrying a brick or a beam and you have safety certificates that you can lose if you have an accident and knock over some of the construction site. So it's a lot of fun. It's cute as a dickens. I couldn't resist it. Men at work. Uh, another game from 2019 that was wonderful is Death Eaters Rising. Now the only reason why it wasn't higher on my list is because it's a reskinning of Thanos Rising. And Thanos uh, was the Marvel Universe game we had that game and I really, really enjoyed it. Lori and I played it. It's a cooperative adventure and just like the, the Death Eaters Rising Harry Potter version. But we love the Harry Potter universe more than Marvel superheroes. As soon as I see Harry Potter on there, we really pay attention to it. We have a couple other games. of Hogwarts Battle is a card game in the Harry Potter universe that's wonderful. Uh, with the uh, Monster Box of Monsters expansion, so that's a lot of fun. But this uh, um, Death Eaters Rising, you get a big figurine of uh, Voldemort. He's in the middle, and yeah, I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. And you have the, you get to play one of the heroes, uh, one of the kids, and in, in the game, and, and it's a lot of fun to play. We enjoy it because it's a solid game, but we also enjoy it because it's Harry Potter. So that, that was from 2019 also. And we also played Papillon, which is a game about butterflies. A beautiful game, obviously, about butterflies that you're placing on a bush uh, in a certain way to score points. But the game was a little fragile physically, so we kind of shied away from that, even though the game, again, was pretty to work as, called Papillon. We played Funkoverse DC. I'm sure, I don't know if you're familiar with all the Funkoverse craze that's going on. We didn't really care for the game. Even the Harry Potter version, we were very tempted because they do have a Harry Potter Funkoverse. We just didn't care for it. Even Harry Potter, we shied away from it. But it was okay, and it's something that's very popular from 2019. We have another game called Queen's Collection, a small box game from Queen Games that we backed on Kickstarter. It's tiny, and it's a lot of fun. We enjoy it, called Queen's Collection. We played a game called Hadara. 
and he also designed Crown of Amara. Uh, so we played Hadara. We really enjoyed that game. It was very good. Didn't make my top 10, but very solid game. I can't remember the guy's name. I'm sorry. And, and again, I talked about Escape Plan. Escape Plan was, uh, you know, Vito Lacerda as usual, huge, big, heavy Euro about uh, getting out of town with uh, money that you you robbed a bank with your buddies and, and the money stashed all over town and you're trying to go to lockers and finding this money and, and get out of town before the cops thump you. Um, I played it a uh, couple of times and we just decided that game wasn't for us, uh, even though we love Vito Lacerda and we have many of his games, but uh, that one just didn't, didn't make the cut. But hey, that's it. That's 2019. That was the best of what I played. There were some so many games out there. I didn't play every game. Obviously, I don't think anybody can, but I played as many as I thought were good and I researched them before I waste my time on them and this is what I came up with for the best of the best and I'm going to a convention here in another couple of weeks here in Orlando and I can't wait to go and play some more games. I got a bunch of games on my list I need to play and figure out how good they are and whether I can tell you about them because I'm not going to talk to you or show you games on this YouTube channel that I don't think are wonderful. I'm not gonna waste my time. I don't wanna give anybody a negative review and so I wouldn't do that. But these are the games that are great and fun to play that I can tell you about so that you can go out and buy them if it looks like something you might enjoy or sounds like something you might enjoy and you can go out and buy them and play them and have fun with your spouse, your kids, your grandparents, your gaming friends, what, whoever you happen to love being around because board gaming is that kind of loving hobby where you get to socialize and enjoy each other's company. So hey, that's it. That's top 10. Make sure you like and subscribe. I love every one of you and please keep on board gaming because it is a magnificent hobby and it is the best hobby on the planet. Hey, see you later. Bye-bye.